Well, hello everyone and welcome to my kitchen table. Now, just use your imagination. It's not quite a kitchen table, is it? And we're not quite at home. Where are we? Well, we're in Australia and we've got this man with us, Harry Bates. I'd like to say welcome to my kitchen table. And if you ever come to Manchester, then you're more than welcome. I'll make you a cup of tea and we can do it properly. Perfect. But I'm a guest in your country. And do you know what, Harry Bates? Um, perfect timing, really, because I have to congratulate you. What a weekend you had. The South Adelaide Rally? Yeah, it? yeah. so on the weekend we had uh, round five of the Australian Rally Championship, which was the um, Adelaide Hills Rally. That's the one. And uh, yeah, we had an amazing weekend. Yeah. Managed to win 12 out of the 18 stages. So, Fantastic. Uh, yeah, one of those weekends. It's all coming together for you. It's taken a little while with that AP4 car, which is a very specific car, isn't it, to the Australian Rally Championship. It's taken a wee while to get it right, but it's looking good now. Yeah, so the RS AP4 is something we built to the AP4 regulations, mm. which are uh, mm. what we have here in the Asia Pacific region, as I suppose something that we can build ourselves to try and compete against yeah. R5 cars. And yeah. on the weekend, we managed to do that for the first time. We were yeah. trading stage times with um, a Skoda R5 car, so oh. it's a big achievement oh. for our team. Fantastic. Well done. Well, listen, first kitchen table since Rally Turkey, and what a Rally Turkey was. Harry, as a media commentator uh, and as a fan of rallying I loved it I thought Turkey was just quite remarkable you know rallying in its purest form I suppose you could argue it's about speed yes it's about navigation but it's about tactics it's about using your head as well it was in the olden days and I think we saw a little bit of that coming back in Turkey because it was so unpredictable so rough that we had drivers having to use their heads yeah, absolutely. It was a, a massively exciting event to watch from the other mm. side of the world for us. Uh, you know, it was incredibly rough and I think that was kind of mm. the anticipation going in was that uh, it was going to be quite rough and a, a proper endurance event, which it really um, lived up to be. For me, and it's still an unanswered question, is what happened to Ogier? Ogier was given an open goal, an open goal to get himself right back to the absolute fighting end of the championship this year. He's still in the championship, very much still in it. And I would never, ever write off Sebastian Ogier. But he performed prodigies of valour to get that car back to service after that issue he had. And then inexplicably in the next stage, what he's called one of the silliest mistakes of his career. As a driver again, these things happen, but 99.9% .9 of the time, you can put your finger on why you made a mistake. It's odd that Ogier cannot quite identify what happened there. Yeah, absolutely. Ogier is not someone we expect to do this. Mm. Uh, you know, he never makes mistakes. He, you know, mm. the, really the trademark of his career has been mm. his lack of mistakes and, and mm. uh, his sort of element of perfection that he mm. brings to the game. But uh, yeah, he did make a mistake. Um, it almost seems like the only thing you can put it down to is a little bit of brain fade. Um, you know, happens to me a lot, happens to me <laughs> an awful lot. Um, which for him is just unusual and yeah. I think that's why we were also yeah. caught off guard. Now, so the championship, Harry, is building up, isn't it? It's building up. We're building towards Rally Australia. We're back here in, in what, five or six weeks time for what is going to be the most remarkable event. I'm excited by it already. But what I'm also excited about is all of this speculation for next year because we're still really uncertain as to who's going where, who wants to do what next year. Now, you have heard some very interesting gossip that I hadn't heard about that man, Ogier. You've read something somewhere. I did read an article that was translated from French into English right. uh, that was suggesting that Ogier was to confirm a move to Citroën soon. Um, all speculation, of course, but uh, right. it also mentioned that he'd tested at the C3 already in the south wow. of France. But, wow. uh, as we know, he does test cars that he doesn't necessarily end up competing in. So, mm. uh, you know, so he's, yeah, in, he's listen, in demand uh, like that. You know, that. what we know about Ogier, normally a normal driver contract with a manufacturer would exclude you from doing that sort of thing before the end of the term of your contract. But what we know is that Ogier, we don't know an awful lot about his contract, but we know it's a different sort of contract. For example, he doesn't have the kind of commitments to PR and all the rest. So you can imagine a situation where Ogier would write into his contract, if another opportunity comes along, I want to be able to test that car. You can imagine that might happen. And Ogier is the sort of guy, probably the only one in the championship, 
who could demand that clause in a contract. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, only two weeks ago, he competed in the DTM series right. in the Mercedes. In the Mercedes, yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's another thing yeah. that he's doing yeah. that other drivers may not necessarily be allowed yeah. to do. But, um, you know, he's a very smart guy. Malcolm yeah. Wilson has said in yeah. the past that he is probably the toughest contract negotiator he's ever met. But, um, you know, he's well, a world you champion. Know what? I, I think you know, he came very close at the end of last year to retiring Ogier. And I think the fact he stayed has been magnificent because I said it last year, Ogier being in the championship lifts the level. The others have to perform at a higher level. He really sets the bar. And what we've seen this year in particular, we've seen Nouvelle upping his game and Tanak upping his game. And I think he's still got a job to do in the championship, Sebastian Ogier, whether it's with M Sport, whether it's with Citroen. We'll have to wait and see. And you know, we're now getting towards Rally GB, you know. Um, I don't think we'll get announcements, and I'll probably be completely wrong in this one. I don't think we'll get an announcement during the week of the rally because there's so much going on with this event. It's such an important event. I think we're now looking a couple of weeks' time till we hear anything. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, for sure. It's going to be interesting either way. Um, mm. Obviously, there's a huge amount of anticipation around mm. the end of the championship, the battle that's going on between the top three drivers. But... Uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see who confirms who confirms the first move yeah. uh, into a different team. And then from there, you sort of start to find that there's a roll on effect with yeah. all the other drivers. Well, let, let's talk a little more about Citroen because there are other things that have happened this week mm. that might, might or might not. But this is what I love. And this is where the kitchen table gives us the opportunity to discuss. Because don't forget that unless it's rock solid, I'll tell you if it's rock solid. Most of the time, it's speculation, it's conjecture. Really, we're looking at the scenarios that are unfolding in the World Rally Championship. For me, one of the strangest things happened this week. The strangest things. Social media is a fantastic addition to the world of rallying because you know, it gives, gives us so much more information, you know, out in the stages in particular, but you know, in between rallies as well. Ollie Christian Vaby, kids make mistakes and he's still a kid. What can we read into him being sacked by Skoda? Now, don't forget, Ollie Christian Vaby, his dad, Eric Vaby, is the boss of Even Management. Even Management are like that, or were like that, with Skoda. So there was, let's go through the drivers. There was Vaby. Who else? Uh, you had Tiedemann. Tiedemann. Lappy. Lappy. Yep. Uh, and Mickelson as well. Right. So all with strong connections with Skoda. All with strong past. connections yep. with Skoda. Now, Vaby has been sacked because apparently of this tweet that he put out saying that he is, and I didn't know this either, he's driving a Citroen, he's jo joining the Citroen team is what the tweet implied. Uh, and on the face of it, it looks like he's put this tweet out without telling Skoda. Mm. Yeah, it's a, a really weird one. Obviously, usually when something as big as this happens, there would be, um, you know, press releases and, and that sort of thing going out. And normally it's managed. Exactly. Normally it's managed by people who are a little older than the young kids, yeah. a little wiser, a little less impetuous perhaps than the likes of yourself. Um, but, you know, in this case, the first we heard of it was that something's happened between Vivi and Skoda. Yeah. Um, they've terminated his... Yeah. his contract and he's now with Citroen so uh so here here Harry <laughs> is where I'm going to put two and two together and get 101 is it part of a bigger deal with even management because what's the speculation well the speculation for a little while now has been Esapeka Lappi and I'm amazed at this I'm amazed mm. that Toyota mm. will let him go because for me Lappi mm. is a huge talent but the speculation is Lappi is leaving Toyota and Citroen want him. So could all of this with young Ollie Christian be part of a bigger deal? Yeah, obviously pretty far-fetched and sort of pie in the sky I at love this point. But stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't lack sense, that's for sure. Um, I agree with you. it doesn't lack sense, I liked you. I, I, I liked you before, I liked you more now. Um, I agree with you. I find it very odd that there's talks of Lappy leaving Toyota. Yeah. He's been a really natural fit into that team yeah. and I think we've all liked him being part of that team. Uh, but, uh, you know, he has to do what's best for his career as well yeah. and potentially there's more money um, elsewhere for him. So, But I, I, I also think that he sees now that Tanak's established himself and Tanak is the undoubted number one at Toyota and everything will go towards Tanak making, world champion, making Tanak world champion. And I think that's maybe the biggest 
issue that if Lappy's got an issue that he's got with Toyota. But other news this week, exciting news this week, my favourite driver of all time, who I am waiting to make a glorious return to the World Rally Championship. Well, it'll be a... In my eyes, it'll be a glorious return, Perez Solberg. Yeah. How exciting is that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we all love Perez Solberg, and yeah. he's got strong ties with Volkswagen at the moment yeah. with the uh, World Rally Cross program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a fantastic move on their part to put him in the R5 car for its debut. Um, no expectations, no, no pressure on him. Go out, exactly. have fun and tell everyone how great this car is. It's a stroke exactly. of genius to put him in the car. Absolutely, yeah. You know? It'll be a, a really uh, good thing for Volkswagen, um, you know, and uh, it brings in uh, a new sort of competitor into the R5 category. And we've got, you know, it's, it's, it's the old boys return, isn't it? It's like an old boys reunion. We've got Loeb, we've got Solberg, Ken Block as well in Rally, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rally of Spain. Uh, it's gonna be one to look forward to for sure. Uh, you know, I was lying in bed this morning, very, very early, because it was an early start. What time did you start this morning? Uh, 4 a.m. my alarm went off. 3 a.m. Ooh. 3 a.m. I don't think I slept last night, but anyway, because I was so excited about meeting you today. I really was. Um, the thing I thought about at about 2 o'clock this morning was, who's going to co-drive for him? Has there been any mention of the co-driver? Yeah, been? I did read that uh, Veronica Ingen is co-driving for Petter in this rally, which... Uh, yeah, she... Veronica is the most... The first time I saw Rally Sweden, it was at the start of the little super special stage that they've got in Hagfors, Hagfors yep. Sprint. Yep. And I looked across, I think she was with... Uh, she was with, um, with Babyface. What's Babyface? Bryn Nielsen. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just, I looked, and the most yeah. beautiful eyes yeah. inside this helmet. It'd be great to see Veronica back. A very good co-driver as well. Yeah, and uh, she's been co-driving for Petter's son yeah. in uh, lots of rallies in Eastern Part Europe. Part of the team, so, isn't she? Part yeah, of the team. Yeah, so, um, you know, there's a, she's been doing a great job mm. for him, and I'm sure she'll yeah. do a great job for Petter. So what else do we know, Harry Bates? Um, obviously, you're the next big thing in terms of Australian rallying, and we look forward to that. But, um, yeah, tell us your plans before we wrap up. We've been wittering for 15 or 20 minutes now. Um, always difficult, and we've seen it over the years. You guys have to work that much harder than boys in Europe. But, you know, the great thing, Hayden Padden's shown it can be done. Uh, to some degree, Brendo's shown that you can Absolutely. get the opportunities on the world stage, as has Molly, obviously. There, there are plenty of examples there, but what, what is your big plan for the future? Um, yeah, I do want to be in Europe, ultimately. It's always yeah. been a goal of mine to be over there. Uh, I think I would like to build some momentum, I guess, on mm. a career here first, because to turn up in Europe and be competitive, you have to, you have to be on a pretty good level. Um, but like you say, uh, Molly Taylor has had mm. um, you know, some great success. She's been podium place getter on JWRC mm. rounds. Um, Brendan Reeves, same deal. He's done very, very well over there. And um, obviously the most successful from this region in recent times has been Hayden Padden. Uh, so oh, I thought you were going to say Atco. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Atco. He meant Atco from Australia. And the most from the Antipodean region is Padden. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how can we forget Atco? So no, me. I definitely haven't forgot Chris Atkinson. No, he, you know, he did a great job. Uh, and and yeah. he was just unlucky. For me, Chris Atkinson yeah. was um, on the verge of establishing himself. 2008, I think it was, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Was uh, more podiums than Petter, more stage wins than Petter. Yeah. He was there. At a time unlucky. where, you know, the team around him yeah. was, was falling apart and then uh, part, there yeah. weren't that many seats around back then, really. There was only was Citroen and Ford left. So, uh, yeah. But there are opportunities for young drivers coming up, which is great to see. Thank you very much for joining us at the kitchen table. Harry, good luck on your next event. It's a biggie. It's a winner takes it all at Rally Australia. Uh, next kitchen table, Rally GB. I'm back in the UK. We'll see you then.